ki jai. Nama charja shula haridas thakur ki jai. Prem shiga ho shi krishna chaitanya prabhu nitaranda shi abhita gadada har shi vasa adi gaur bhakti vrinda ki jai. Shri shi vada krishna gopa gopina shama kun rada kun giri govardhan ki jai. Shri vrindavan dham ki jai. Shri maya purna vajvit dham ki jai. Shri jagannath puri dham ki jai. Jagannath swami valade subhadra ki jai. Shri shi gaur nitai ki jai. Shri shi janmashtami mahotsav yatra ki jai. Gaur prema. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Shri Guru Garanga. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Glories to Prabhupada. I'll stop it. In my own Vishnu Dharai Krishna Krishna Dharai 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 Ah. Okay, that's it. That's all we need. <laughs> the holy name is everything. Uh, the holy name is the Yuga Dharma. Without the holy name, none of the other performances of pious activities or rituals or study of the Vedas or... Uh, sacrifice or karma yoga has any effect. I want to speak of <clears throat> hatha yoga, meditation, and uh, temple worship and things like that that aren't even the dharma in the Kali Yuga. Uh, these things can't give any benefit unless they're performed properly. And in this age, we can't perform them properly. So the best thing is to just chant the holy name, chant the holy name, chant the holy name. Huh? Harir Nam, Harir Nam, Harir Nam, Eva Eva. Kalao Nasjeva, 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 Gati Ranyata. So in this age of Kali Yuga, chant the holy name in the beginning stage, uh, the offensive stage, Kanisht Adhikari. Chant the holy name in the clearing stage, the middle stage, Madhyam Adhikari. Chant the holy name in the perfectional stage, Uttam Adhikari. Defenselessly. Huh? But just chant the holy name. <laughs> Why? Nascheva, Nascheva, Nascheva. No other way by penances, austerities of the yoga system, silent meditation, like that. No other way by opulent sacrifices and ritualistic activities. No other way by complicated rituals of temple worship and um, intensive study of the Vedas. Huh? No other way but chanting of the holy name. Gatir Anyata. Huh? That'll get you there. <laughs> it's the Gati. Huh? It's the path. So today's Janmashtami. Janma means birth. And Ashta, Ashtami means eighth. The eighth day in the Vedic calendar, there's two uh, sections of the month, uh, the Gora Paksha and the Krishna Paksha. Or the, sometimes the Gora Paksha is called the Shukla Paksha, the bright fortnight, and the Krishna Paksha is the dark fortnight. So Krishna is born on the eighth day of the dark fortnight, Krishna Paksha, uh, in the summertime. And in India, especially, this is considered the start of the rainy season. Uh, and almost you can calculate on every Janmashtami, there's going to be a huge downpour in Vrindavan, especially. I've seen it. I was in Vrindavan one time on Janmashtami. And I had gone to the next town, Matra, to buy a tambura. So here I had this big, beautiful tambura. And I was coming back, and it started raining. I mean, it was raining so bad. By the time we got to the bridge over the Jamuna, uh, the rickshaw wala, the, the rickshaw driver, was almost underwater. <laughs> and I'm sitting on the seat, holding this big tambura up, you're trying to keep it out, out, out of the, what, the water. <laughs> Every Janmashtami that I've been in India, it rained right on right on that day. 
So that's the story of Krishna's birth, that when he appeared, his prisons, his prison, his parents were in the prison house of Kanksha. And uh, so he appeared in the prison house in his original forearm form. And uh, of course, his mother and father offered prayers and all that, and because they couldn't offer anything else. So then they said, no, please make yourself into a little baby form. And then, you know, we can do something to take care of you. Otherwise, they're, they're going to definitely notice you here. <laughs> so he made himself into a little baby form. And then it began to rain very hard. And the mystic sleep came over all the guards and all the people in the town. So everyone was asleep. And then the, the gates magically opened. Huh? And Vasudev took Krishna in his arms. And he went out, and he crossed the Jamuna. So the Jamuna got out of his way, uh, just like Moses in the Red Sea. And so Vasudev came over to Braja, and he exchanged baby Krishna for the girl child that was born to Mother Yashoda. At least that's the way it is in the scriptures. Now, if you ask the people in Vrindavan, they say, no, 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 this is all false. This is just a legend. This is just a cover story. Actually, Krishna is born only in Braja. Huh? They say like that. That's their mood. Because the Krishna who is born to Vasudev is not the original Krishna. He's Vasudev Krishna, meaning he is the original Vishnu form. Huh? He's the Yuga avatar of the Dwapara Yuga. <coughs> And his pastimes are called Dvorka Lila, uh, the later pastimes of Krishna, Battle of Kurukshetra and all that, Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Vasudev Krishna. But the Krishna in Vrindavan is Govinda. Uh, and that's the original form of Krishna. So the Brajvasis are right when they say only the original form of Krishna is born here. Uh, he's not born anywhere else. He's born to Mother Yashoda, Nanda and Yashoda. Vasudev and Devaki, they're doing some other kind of worship. We don't know what that is. Uh, we don't know anything about that. <laughs> we just know our Krishna. <laughs> so Krishna comes in Braja Vrindavan, and he's the transcendental cowherd boy, Govinda. And uh, his form is the most beautiful and his pastimes are the most ecstatic uh, because they reveal the great secret of conjugal love between Radha and Krishna. And that's the mood of our Sampradaya. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he appeared as Radha and Krishna combined. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahe Anya. He is nothing but the two of them combined. So, our lineage, of course, is descended from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And his mood of worship is this mood of conjugal love. So this is what we celebrate, really, when we're celebrating Janmashtami. Um, because all the other moods of devotional service are contained within conjugal love. Parenthood, friendship, servitorship, and even uh, neutrality. Uh, are contained within this conjugal love and all the indirect rasas also. So the conjugal love is something very special. And if we have the chance to uh, cultivate this very high mood, then we should take uh, the instruction and understand this mood. You should read Nectar of Devotion and Srimad Bhagavatam very carefully, uh, going through it in, from the beginning. Don't skip to the end. Huh? Go through the whole Bhagavatam and then read the 10th canto about Krishna's pastimes. Then you can understand. Huh? So anyway, I'm trying to keep my remarks short because we have a lot of ceremony to do today. Uh, first we're going to do Abhishek of uh, Gornitai deities. And uh, all of our new devotees are here today. Well, they're not exactly new. <laughs> They've been around for a while. 
But um, we're, so we're celebrating Janmashtami and Uddhava Prabhu's birthday and our new temple and reinstalling our Gornitai deities and everything. <laughs> so we're also, oh yes, that's right, yeah. we're going to initiate. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> maybe tomorrow. <laughs> this is this is the land of the manana bodies. <laughs> so, uh, no, we'll get around to it. Don't worry. <laughs> we do. We have what, 45 gigabytes of recording space, so we can take our time.